This is the Roaring Elephant podcast, and I'm going to admit today I can't do this without my co-host, Dave. Hi, Dave. Oh, as always, a pleasure to work with you, Jan. Are we getting paid for this? this? glorious endeavor. Yes, we get paid in life lessons and I, values. I get enough life lessons as it is. Values in the hand I can use every day. <laughs> <laughs> We're continuing our little uh, little journey down the various values of various organisations that we either are at or have been at that uh, that really resonate with us, and we're at the next one in the list, which is help each other thrive. So this one, this one for me, um, as as Jon is. Uh, regularly pointing out so I'm a, I'm a manager I run sort of an organization and therefore I'm responsible for recruiting and one of the things that I look for um, and talk about very often when I'm in the early stages of a hiring process and talking to a candidate is teamwork and collaboration like teamwork and collaboration is incredibly um, important to me and I think that's sort of that's embodied in many ways by by this sort of uh, this value helping each other thrive and for me this is all about um, the opposite of this I guess is where you have people that are more sort of more after themselves and more after their own success sometimes hear these folks called kind of lone wolves and they can also be very successful individuals um, but in my, you know, in my world, if you're not also helping out your colleagues and, you know, maybe you learn something, but if you don't then share that with your colleagues and share that with the wider team or the wider organization, if you're not bringing your knowledge back to that wider group, then you're, you're doing both yourself and the organization a disservice. And it's often, you're often significantly better off if you've got a group of people working together versus um you know a bunch of lone wolves going off and doing their own thing in their own directions um, and kind of not thinking about the common good and, and the common goal that you're, you're all trying to achieve so this this for me is is all about people working together people helping each other um no one ever being kind of afraid to put their hand up and say hey I'm just about to do something new. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work or what what's needed here. Can someone give me a hand? And also no one ever being afraid of saying, hey, happy to help you. Let's go figure this out and uh, and get this done. So this, I think, is, is really important. Some people think that this is more important when you're a smaller organization and is less important when you get larger. Uh, I actually kind of <laughs> strongly disagree with that because I think the larger that you get, the more sort of communication becomes uh, a problem, the more easier it is to become sort of siloed and things like that. So continuing to see you know, how you can help your, your fellow colleague out and to continue to ask also if you're in a position where you think you need help or may need help, um, you know, that's kind of, for me, something that uh, separates, you know, a pretty average organization from one that I think is pretty special. Yeah, I mean, a large, large organization is typically a collection of small entities, right? There's all, yeah. always groups within a large organization, they have the same yeah. thing. But anyway, so letting each other thrive in a team environment. So let me see if I got this right. If I'm part of a team and I tell everybody to what they need to do, so I don't need to do anything myself. I make them learn and educate themselves. So that's helping each other thrive. I'm doing good, right? No. Oh, dang. <laughs> don't tell my boss. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hear you say it all, and yes, on the face of it all, down sound, it all sounds very, very good. But you said you looked for this when you're doing the hiring. Now, I've been involved not as a manager, I'm not that dumb, uh, not that manager dumb, but not that dumb. Let's not go there. Um, but I do kind of do technical interviews and stuff like that. And you talk to a person for half an hour to an hour and a half, something like that in between there. 
relatively easy to figure out what their knowledge level is, what mm. their comf comfort is, what the comfort zone is with the uh, technology of the company you're working for is selling, they'd have to come in, how much training they will need, things like that. But how do you assess without having a kind of practical exercise, mm. uh, how good they are in teamwork? Because I remember when I just left school, no, oh, last century somewhere, <laughs> And I went for a job interview once, and that was like a whole day. And they actually had exercises where the group was given an impossible task. And afterwards, I uh, I, 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 uh, I figured out that the, the goal for them was to see, okay, who's going to try to really get their thing done in spite of everybody else? That was a bad thing. <laughs> mm. And who was just trying, okay, let's see how we can get maximized profit for everybody, which is, I think, what this kind of means. Let's not... Yeah. Let's make the group successful and not the individual. These days, you don't have that anymore. With uh, distributed companies, remote working, you hardly ever, s there's a small chance you actually see the person in real life before he gets he or she gets hired. So how would you, in an interview environment, define or decide or figure out if that person is going to be a team player? I, I look for a variety of different things. Um, it's interesting because I think this is actually one of the easier ones to figure out. And it's not so much um, looking for the the sort of the team player nature as it is looking for the opposite kind of outlier and looking for sort of very much more of the lone wolf tendencies. So, you know, looking out for people that are far more focused on themselves and what's in it for them and are less interested in what the the larger team or the larger group are involved in but they just want to know what well, who who will I be working with who's you know who's my a what's the um you know, what does what does um you know how will I get recognized if I do well things like that and I'm not saying that all of those mm -hmm. things are are bad things um, like as part of a larger picture, those are all actually pretty good questions. But if that's the sole kind of level of your focus and all of the questions are about kind of you as an individual and like no real concern about the wider group, that's where that sort of thing starts to, to come up. Now, most people, you know, they want to, they want to meet, you know, a couple of their coworkers or potential coworkers. They want to understand, you know, how the the wider group dynamic is, the wider team sort of conversations, compensation for the wider group. They're less worried about their own individual um, number necessarily. If it's wound into a larger group, you know, they're happy with that. Um, that can be a part of it. And you tend, or I tend to look out for um, those sorts of those sorts of things during an interview, and usually, if you start to see some of these things, you can kind of start to dig in a little bit deeper and explore, you know, times when you know they've been successful as a team or things that they've done as a, a group, and just hearing how people talk about their successes or even you know their failures. Um, you know, you tend to see people kind of pivoting that conversation in one direction or another. And that also tells you a lot about that kind of nature of being team oriented or being more individually focused. And again, a level of individual focus is a good thing. You know, being aware of you know, how you fit into an organization and what you will be doing and all that sort of stuff. Like these are all really, really, you know, great things to know. But focus too much on the individual and less about what the bigger picture is, is, you know, one of the things that uh, is often a bit of a red flag. Isn't this kind of easy to fake? Because uh, asking for past experiences where you were part of a team that was blah, 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 blah. I mean, those are the standards. I mean, whenever I go, and whenever anybody goes for a job interview, you should already have some done some preparation where you have your biggest failure, biggest success, and the team. That stuff that you kind of prepare, and whether it's true or not, you ain't, you're not be able to verify it anyway. So, yes, asking it and 
even seeing it, that they didn't even prepare the question, that's definitely a sign. <laughs> even even when people prepare for it, you'd be surprised. Like the the answers that people give, even if they think they've prepared for it, like how they answer the question often tells you a lot more than than a lot of people realize. Um, a lot of it is about listening to it. I yes, True. you can prepare for uh, for this this sort of thing a great deal. Um, but people often let their true colors kind of shine through. And the more that you dig into, like someone will prepare, let's say a certain level of depth on an answer. Um, what most people aren't prepared for is for you to then continue to dig into that particular situation or that particular okay. scenario and like continue to ask deeper and deeper questions about specific elements that they bring up. Um, and then, you know, if it's not true, you start to see things kind of unraveling a little bit. You start to see, like, if it's a situation that they, they've made up, for example, very often, like, the pauses get longer as they're thinking <laughs> of how on, earth, how on earth can I answer this in a way that makes me look good, rather than just telling you the truth. Like, the truth often, like, it's very easy for people to just reel off, oh, well, we did this, we did that, and, or whatever it might be. But if people start stopping and pausing and thinking, you know, that's usually where you've you've sort of uncovered something a little bit uh, concerning. Uh, I think you gravely underestimate my level of preparedness for these things. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I'm a bit of my in my own bubble effect here because we both work in sales, and uh, during an interview, we typically do a technical part because I do a technical part, and then some more. What kind of person is this, and is this a person fit for a sales job? And one of the things I often ask the interviewee is, um, sell me a product, namely you. And basically, selling shouldn't be lying. No, it Absolutely. should have truth in there. But there's different ways of saying something is bad or something is good. And that's mm -hmm. what selling is about. Finding out, okay, this is, is this product good for everything all the time? Nope, no product exists <laughs> like that. So it's finding the way to connect it and then seeing quantitative, quantitatively if you want, if the customer is going to be happy or not with the thing. So if you come into an interview, you apparently think we would be happy to hire you. So sell yourself. And if then they can't do that, and that's pretty much a thinking on your feet kind of a, a kind of a, a challenge, right? I mean, we don't, I don't share it in advance. We usually share the questions in advance for technical parts. People can prepare a bit, but this is one I just throw out there without any preparation cost. They shouldn't need a product. They should know the product very well. <laughs> and they should be able to talk about it. If you can't and talk they should about know it. themselves very well. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I say. They should know the product very well because they are the product. Mm -hmm. And, um, so when you then have the question about the group thing, well, if they are lying and they can lie very well around it, that would actually be a positive at some point. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the, the other thing is realistically, um, and again, this is, I think this is more so in the, the world that we inhabit. Um, it's a very small world. Like, the the network effect mm -hmm. yes and no. is is very real and uh, you know i've been doing this for let's just say quite some time now <laughs> where this is the world of pre-sales specifically for me around kind of open source i built up like a pretty substantial network over the time and it's very rare that i don't know if i don't know someone I know someone that knows someone that knows this individual and like it's very having kind of um some sort of back channel as to like hey what do you That's what do you cheating. think of this individual it absolutely <laughs> is cheating but if you're not using absolutely every resource to uh, to make the best decisions then like one of the things that i will always say for um, for an se is if you're not stacking the deck in your favor then you're not doing your job correctly. Like if you're not making sure that you're focusing on the use cases that are best for your product and your technology that align closest with what the customer's most interested in, like if you just let let the cards or let the the dice you know, roll any way they like, well, like you've yeah. just you've just put yourself at a disadvantage. But if, instead, if you push to 
understand what the customer's most interested in. Make sure that you're portraying those areas or features or whatever's of your of your product that best align to that. Um, you know, then if you just instead do a, like a random harbor tour of, uh, of of your product, then like, you've already set yourself up at a as a, at a disservice. So. If you're not stacking the deck in your favor, you're, you're not doing your job correctly. And it's the same with uh, with everything else, I think. Yeah, I would say moderation is uh, key here. Mm. Don't overstack the deck. Because again, I think we talked about it last time. I don't over prepare anymore. I make sure I have a good... My bag is full with ways to tackle almost everything with some exceptions and then at the time when the dice are rolled you guide them into a certain corner so you have some baggage you can apply to whatever is happening at that point going into a meeting and having already the outcome in mind and then doing everything you can to steer the customer towards that outcome i've seen people do that mm. people have tried to do that to me <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's not a good thing. You should always remain flexible and be able to yeah. go with the flow. And that's, again, that's what I mentioned earlier, but this is a thinking on your feet idea. You, you get a, suddenly a statement out of the blue. We had no idea it was going to come. Deal yeah. with it. Go with it. And yeah. the, the best temporizing measure I found is uh, acting dumb. Uh, oh, you say that. Oh, that's interesting. What do you mean by that? And that way they, they spend some more time on it and I can... Yeah, I mean, this we're, we're veering into uh, yeah. <laughs> in, into kind of like yeah, how to how to deal with some of these interesting scenarios here. But I think the to, to get back to the the maybe the the value, um, this is this is one of those values. I think that this is just about being a good human. Like, just be be a good individual. Like, if you see someone struggling and you can help them. Then help them. Um, um, yeah, I, I, that's one way to think of it. But you don't have to be a good individual. What you need I to mean, know is you need to accept and understand that you will only get better by helping others. So this could be totally selfish, totally mm -hmm. enlightened self-interest, whatever you want to call it. You can't learn everything, do everything by yourself. You have mm -hmm. to, at some point, dep depend on others. And yep. if you never help somebody else somebody else isn't going to help you yeah yeah so it's really, totally, really can be point. totally selfish on this <laughs> and it's amazing how many people don't get that yeah yeah no it, it's a very 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 good point now the negative of this one for me is uh, abuse there are certain people out there that always rely on the help of others to do whatever needs to be done and yeah I've said this before already, one of the hardest things to learn, especially when you're younger, is uh, when to say no and how to say mm -hmm. no in a way that is still constructive. <laughs> yeah. And the way that I kind of sidestep that one is I will be happy to help pretty much everybody, <clears throat> mm -hmm. excuse me, but they need to be there. I will always refuse oh, to yeah. just, uh, this presentation will be made, can you help me with that? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll help. Okay, here's the file, let me know when it's done. No, <laughs> we will yeah, work on yeah. this together and we will spend time on it together. And this is yeah. basically also how I uh, relate with my sales reps, for example, because there are a lot of sales rep and solution architect, pre-sales engineer relationships that are pretty much abusive, where the rep is just going to dump a lot of stuff on the SA because SAs are magic and they will just make it happen. Whenever I do a presentation somewhere, I will always insist that the rep also presents one or two slides. Yeah, just to make sure that we all have some skin in the game, that we all had to put effort in to make this happen. And that way, time becomes valuable for both. It becomes an, a, a, a currency, basically. Yes, you can have yeah. to do this. It's going to take a amount of time and it's going to take a amount of time for you as well. So are you sure you want to do this? Yes. OK, fine. Let's do it. Yeah, I think that the the good thing, if there is such a thing uh, of of when this gets abused, is that as long as people are kind of open about giving feedback it usually gets detected pretty quickly like if you've got if you see one person that you know 
all is always asking for help with everything single kind of little problem that comes up it's a pretty good indicator that they're struggling with something now it could be that they've got you know maybe they've got a personal situation or maybe um maybe this is frankly like stretching their uh, knowledge abilities experience too far um and you need to kind of dial back expectations of of you know what uh, what they should be doing and that those are okay like it's okay to identify that you know someone you know needs a bit of extra space around them at the moment just because of they've got something going on and it's okay to identify that hey we might have a, a challenge here with someone that we've we've brought on board and and they're may or transferred across and maybe they need some more guidance some more some more kind of coaching through some of the fundamentals or, you know, worst case is maybe you've brought someone on board or transferred someone across and maybe this role isn't a good fit. Um, you know, it's okay as long as you identify those things and, you know, make sure that you understand what the situation is and then, you know, take the appropriate kind of action. What's not okay is if you see this kind of thing happening, this, to, you know, to your point, this abuse mm -hmm. of, uh, of this value, and you just kind of ignore it, sweep it under the rug, or because all you're doing then is you're basically telling people that actually it's okay for you to opt out of learning anything new or kind of developing or bettering yourself. And actually you can just, you know, coast along, have everyone else to your point earlier, have everyone else do your work for you. <laughs> and then, um, and then just kind of coast through, you know, your, your, your days, your weeks, your months, uh, your time in seat and like that's that's not kind of acceptable but the 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 nuance for me here is really goes back to this kind of this difference between kind of lone wolves and people that that really understand the value of teamwork and collaboration and the the effect on a a you know a, say a growing or larger group of individuals you can have, and I've seen this before in you know, previous roles, previous careers, where you can see that there's this group of incredibly talented individuals, but they're just kind of not really working together. Like they're all doing great stuff, but you can almost see them like all shooting off in sort of like different directions. And you end up in this position where they might each have great ideas, but if they're not kind of collaborating together things can get very just disjointed very confused very confusing um, not just for not just kind of for you but also then let's say you know one of those goes on a holiday and someone else sort of starts to cover and they're going in a completely different direction from when that first individual was going so it's not just about this happy clappy let's all help each other be get, be better kind of thing there's a lot of uh, this that comes back to, you know, an organization at scale uh, needs to be very closely aligned together, you know, in a single direction, a single purpose. And, you know, helping each other thrive is actually a really good way to make sure that, you know, you can, you can understand what other people are doing, how they're doing it. You can share, you know, the successes, the failures, that sort of thing. And you can help everyone to, to kind of hone in on, you know, what is the best way to approach a particular situation or a particular um, particular challenge. And I think that's, that's for me, one of the things that, um, one of the reasons I think this is actually a really, probably a more important value than maybe it looks like on the surface. Yeah, it also hits the angle of diversity a little bit. Because actually mm. last week I had a chat with somebody who was building a new workshop. And yeah, I'm going to do it by myself. It's faster and it's easier and I've sold on and it's finished. And did anybody else look at it? Because when you build these things, it may be totally logical and self-explanatory to you with your background. But yeah. if you're going to present this to a group of people that are not you, yeah, you should at least have somebody else look at it and even better build this thing together so you don't have a lot of fixing to do afterwards yeah and that's also a way of helping each other to attain a better product and to your point of having all the lone wolves 
not only does it create chaos, it will also create subpar products. Okay, products are perfect for the person. It'll do exactly what that person needs and wants, mm. but for nobody else. Yeah. And in a company, you can sometimes just have to fix a problem that only you encounter, but then something is wrong, I think. <laughs> Typically, you build it for, for big, bigger things. And one last, for me, last... Um, uh, dimension I want to touch upon is the effect of uh, leadership of management here. Mm. And this is also a effect of large versus small companies. In smaller companies, everybody knows everybody. And if there's somebody who's abusing this, it'll, as you said, it'll get called out, it'll be seen, and that's fine. Well, it's not fine, but it'll get solved. <laughs> that's all <of> that. <laughs> In large companies, however, and I've lived through this a couple of times already in my career, uh, management gets totally detached from the underlings, from the plebs, from the galley slaves. Yeah, that's enough uh, pejoratives. Um, that it doesn't, uh, they don't see it anymore. And actually, when you talked earlier about uh, group rewards versus individual rewards, I always prefer a group quota pool or something what else, because then there is no individual, it is just a team. Smaller companies typically have pool quotas. Large companies typically go to individual quotas because they kind of want to, uh, uh, yeah, make that personal achievement. They, they play very hard on that to make, mm. they think that that's actually good, whatever. But what you then see often is that the person that is abusing this is getting more and more uh, spotlight. Mm. And actually the whole, the bad way of doing things gets promoted as the right way of doing things. And in the end, yeah the whole team consists of only that kind of person anymore and guess what nothing gets done anymore yeah yeah i couldn't couldn't agree with you more like this is yeah we can talk about uh, like methods of designing compensation another time but <laughs> It, just give me all your is, money that's fine yeah sure uh no um i think this is yeah this is one of the things that i think we, we very closely kind of believe very similar like the the compensation drives behavior always like yes. more so in some individuals than in others but it's always gonna gonna be there that that impact is always going to be there and so if you if you are attracted to a particular dynamic that probably does say something about you and probably says something about your you know the closeness of your alignment towards this kind of value so yeah i uh, couldn't agree more yeah that's all i think i have on this uh, value as you said it's way deeper than it appears at first sight and as indeed. all values it can be good or could be used for it could be used for good or for bad indeed well in that case, that is all the time we have today. You can support this podcast by becoming a Patreon. Every contribution really does help. We are on YouTube. You can see Jon's beautiful slides. Uh, you can like, you can subscribe and hit the notification bell, comment and do all the YouTube things. You can also go to roaringelephant.org for a link to our Patreon page and for more information about the podcast. You can still kind of, sort of, ish follow us on Twitter. But most importantly, you can send us an email to podcast at roaringelephant.org. Until next time, my name is Absolutely Thriving Dave. And my name is Jon, who has just learned I can send a couple of recordings to my co-host for editing. And get silence for a reply. <laughs> I mean, you can send them. Yes, absolutely. Very little will get done with them. Just saying. Well, we'll still try to get it finished and uh, see you all again next week. Goodbye. See you later.